Today's scripture reading is from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you. When you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go to wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of life. Thank you, Colin. Please pray with me. Holy God, as we have come before your scripture, as we have opened our hearts in prayer to you, may we welcome your Holy Spirit in now. And may your spirit do what your spirit does best, to love us, to give us grace, and to give us direction in where you would have us go. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So growing up in the church that I grew up in, I never had this, but now that I've come to Princeton Seminary and been in the Northeast, I think it may be a mainline tradition. Oftentimes the first Sunday right after Easter is a time to crack jokes. 
all the, like it's that, it's called Holy Humor Sunday. Has anyone ever heard of this? Never heard of, okay. Then I feel better already. Thank you for being with me in that vulnerable moment. <laughs> I didn't have any jokes last week, but this week felt ripe for jokes. But it's only gonna be a joke, it's gonna be one, and it's only gonna be a joke for like maybe 5% of you. So, you know, two or three of you, we'll see how this works. Um, anyone know who Dwayne The Rock Johnson is, the actor? Um, anyone know that Dwayne The Rock Johnson didn't start out in acting, but actually in pro wrestling? Anyone? All right. Um, anyone know that Simon Peter got his name Simon Peter in the Bible, and Peter comes from the Greek word Petra, which is rock? And Peter just had breakfast, so I just have to say, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? I'm sorry, that was a bad joke that I just had to get out. Thank you. He didn't even plan that. That was perfect. That was horrible. Peter is one of my favorite characters. We're going to spend time with Peter in the coming future because he's so human to me. But as we come to this text, as we come to John chapter 21, I have to ask, is this the beginning or is this the end? It's a question that's not just on my mind, but it's on so many people's mind. About the world. Is this the end? Or is this the beginning? About our jobs, is this the end or is this the beginning? About the school year, is this the end or the beginning? About our understanding of government in America, is this the end? Or is this the beginning? About post-COVID life, is this the end? Is this the beginning? Maybe even about, maybe some of you have wondered even about this church, about Kingston United Methodist Church. Is this the end? Or is this the beginning? But really, that question for me comes with John chapter 21. If we're not paying attention when we're reading scripture, if we just pluck things out, sometimes we miss what's going on in the wider picture. Sometimes we can see scripture as just a boring old book that has no relevance to our lives in the 21st century. But if we are paying attention, if we are seeing the context of what's going on, these stories of real life people being in the nitty grittiness of life can look very similar to the lives you and I lead. So let's start at the beginning or the end, or wherever it is. And actually, by that, I mean not even the beginning of John chapter 21, which Colin read for us today, starting in verse 1. But if we were to think back to what Mikey read for us last week in John chapter 20, and for those of you in person, feel free to pop open a Bible, or those online, feel free to pop open a Bible. The end of chapter 20 says this. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the, his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's a great closer. Like the Great Commission at the end of Matthew, or if you look to Mark and Luke, like this is just, I mean, it seems like you can hear the director yelling, cut, that's a wrap, and the whole, you know, the whole cast just cheering. It's a perfect closer. But then we have chapter 21. Is it an epilogue? Is it a continuation? Is it some of those other signs in the presence of his disciples? We're not sure. It's like the credits have already begun to run, and then there's this little extra snippet that's thrown in. It's like the directors of Marvel movies just read John and were like, this is actually a really good idea. We're going to do this in all our movies, too. We're going to add this little snippet in for people to know what's coming in the future. That seems to be John chapter 21. So here we find seven disciples, not 11, seven. We know them, that many of the disciples were locking themselves behind closed doors for fear of the religious leaders prior to Jesus appearing to them, and that Thomas was able to see Jesus and even touch his hands and his side. But we're not sure how much longer John chapter 21 is than the end of John chapter 20. 
So seven, a holy number, go fishing. Fishing for people doesn't seem to be on the horizon, so they go back to what they know. Fishing for fish. They go back to their livelihoods. Maybe it feels like they've just been pink-slipped from their teaching jobs and need to go back to their family job. Even if it's not what they want to do, it's all they could do. Maybe they actually need to move back in with their parents or sleep on a friend's floor while they get their head right and see what to do next. So they do the one thing that they know how to do. Go fishing. And they get nothing. Now, I know that this can happen, fishing and catching nothing, but I've got to imagine that for washed-up disciples who came into ministry from families steeped in the fishing business, that this has got to hurt even more. It's salt on an open wound. It's adding insult to injury. I'm seeing an image of a door-to-door salesperson just getting a door slammed in front of their face over and over. You can always go back to it, they said. It's a stable job. And yet, they walk away empty-handed. Hungry, frustrated, tired, ready to dock the boat and dock their dreams. And then a voice calls out to them from shore, about a hundred yards off, and I'm not sure if they heard it the first time, or if they wondered if really they were the ones being yelled at. But then it comes into focus. Hey, children, you got nothing, didn't you? Real wise guy, this one, huh? No, why are you goading him? Well, why, don't, why don't you try the right side? Try the right side? Why don't you try the right side? We just tried the right side, and there was nothing there. Who in the Gehenna does this person think they are? Nothing is biting. Peter, just try it. Okay. Uh, uh, guys, uh, guys, I'm going to need your help. What's going on? John, look at this. He was right. I, I can't even pick this thing up. Help, I need your help. I need your help. It's, it's got to be the Lord. It's what? It's got to be the Lord. It's got to be the Lord. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, uh. Then Peter puts on his clothes for he's fishing naked in the night with the other disciples and jumps overboard and swims to shore before the boat can make it there. The other six pop off the boat and greet who they believe, hope, to be Jesus sitting at a charcoal fire with some bread warming up. They grab some of the fish from that catch, some of the 153, and no one asked, who are you? Because They knew it was the Lord, and they shared a meal with him. And then Peter gets to have a special conversation with Jesus on the side. Maybe it's as they're cleaning things up or putting the fire out, almost like a mentor as they give you their final blessing while you're standing on the porch. The conversations that can happen as you're leaving work or leaving church kind of just sit with you as you go. It's a benediction sorts. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. And the screen goes black. Scripture is full of stories where God shows up in the ordinary work. In fishing, in cooking food, being at home, out in the garden, on the beach, through failures, through what seem to be failures. When we think the story is over, God seems to continue to show up, giving us hope and pointing us in the right direction, calling to us from the outside, across the water, from the community, from voices we may or may not be able to recognize, and calling us to try again. Knowing that we have faithfully tried many times before, Christ calls to us again. Try again with those nets that you're casting. Try again loving the one who has been bitter. Try again to feed God's sheep. Try again to show compassion to the self-righteous one. Try again to feed Jesus' lambs. 
Try again to jump out of the boat and follow where God is calling to you, calling from out in the world and preparing a table for you to dine at. Try again to feed God's sheep. Feed more sheep. There it is. It's a phrase this church has used for years to understand its ministry to one another and to the community. It's why we have a feed trough. It's why we had the feed truck. To connect the community and the church. To build bridges between the two so the people from the community could have an overwhelmingly positive experience with the church. To live out a mission connected with food, work, neighbor. There was once this very strong community bridge, but as we know when we go outside, it's no longer there. We still have the shirts, we still have the mugs, we still have the tote bags, we still have the memories. Are we done? Is this the end? Or is this the beginning? The curtain may have fallen, the truck may be sold, and this worship service may come to an end, but just like Peter, we have a whole life ahead of us where God is going to continue to call out to us, to cast our nets to the other side, to try again to feed more sheep. And whether we know it is the voice of God or another voice calling from the local community to us, God is going to invite us to try again to feed more sheep. This is not the end. This is the beginning. As we go from this service, as we continue worshiping together and discerning the voice of God, May we listen to the voice of this Kingston community to see how we can continue to try again to feed more sheep. Amen.